There are two ways of creating animations in CSS, transitions and animations. Transitions let changes in a property happen gradually instead of instantly. Without transitions, any changes in a property would happen right away. For example, imagine a button that changes color when you hover over it. Without a transition, it would switch colors instantly. But with a transition, it changes color smoothly over time. Animations give you more control with keyframes. This means you can create detailed, step-by-step -step animations. For example, think of an element that moves and then its shape changes. With animations, you can define each step of this movement. You can create this type of amazing effect by using both transitions and animations together. To make this button animation, check out our older video. Let's get started. CSS Animations. It enable you to create complex animations that progress through multiple styles over time. They're defined using the keyframes rule, which allows you to specify the styles at various points during the animation. You can control the timing, duration, and other aspects of the animation using animation properties, but more on those later. The keyframes rule in CSS animations is incredibly powerful, allowing for detailed specification of an animation's behavior at various stages of its execution. You're not limited to just the start from and end to points. You can specify any number of intermediate steps, called keyframes, to create complex animations. Each keyframe can define the CSS properties to apply at that specific point in the animation timeline. This example demonstrates one animation that changes the color of an element through multiple colors over the animation timeline. Let's create an animation. The transform property in CSS is used to apply geometric transformations to an element, such as moving, scaling, rotating, or skewing. You can do many things with the transform property, but here is a short description of the most common ones. Translate moves an element horizontally and vertically. Scale scales an element by a specified factor in the horizontal and vertical directions. If you specify only one value, it scales both directions equally. Rotate rotates an element clockwise from its current position. Here, the element moves 100 pixels to the right and 100 pixels down from its original position and then rotates 45 degrees clockwise. The transform property is often used in conjunction with animations and transitions to create more dynamic and visually appealing effects. If you don't know all the CSS transform properties, then watch these videos. Click on the I button or check the links in the description. By combining keyframe animations or transitions with transformations, you can create complex, smooth animations that enhance the user interface of a web page. For instance, let's add a hover state that moves our element and rotates it 135 degrees when we hover. Initially, this change takes effect immediately. To make it smoother, we can use the transition properties. Here, we use the transition property with the name transform, set the transition duration to one second, the transition timing function to ease, and the transition delay to zero seconds. To smoothly change the background color of the element, add it to the transition property. So, to apply two properties simultaneously, combine them into a single property with multiple values. Instead of using these four properties separately, we can use the shorthand transition property. This works great, and we can shorten our code even more if we have a delay of zero seconds. If you don't know all the CSS transition properties, then watch these videos. Click on the I button or check the links in the description. Let's create an animation. To create an animation, we first need an element that we want to animate. I have an element with the class of box. To animate this box in the CSS file, I will add a keyframe. The syntax for this is to use keyframes followed by the name of our animation. I'm going to call it an example. We define the animation. I want my box to move upwards and rotate on the screen, then return to its original position. To do this, I need to define the rules from the beginning to the end of the animation. I can add the two values from and to. From represents the beginning of the animation, or 0% completed. 
I want the animation to start at 0 pixels in its original position and move to negative 100 pixels upwards and rotate. So inside from, I will add a transform of translate Y 0 pixels and rotate 0 degrees. I set this to 0 because it will bring the element back to its original position, to represent the end of the animation, or 100% completed. Inside 2, I will add a transform of translate Y negative 100 pixels and rotate 135 degrees. Looking at our box, we see nothing is happening. This is because we haven't applied the animation to our box. To do this, we need to add the seven animation properties to the dot box class. Animation name, animation duration, animation timing function, animation delay, animation iteration count, animation direction, animation fill mode, and animation play state. Animation name specifies the name of the keyframe animation that should be applied to the element. Animation duration determines the length of time that an animation takes to complete one cycle. It's defined in seconds or milliseconds. Animation timing function defines the speed curve of the animation, which controls how the animation progresses through its duration. Common values include linear, ease, ease in, ease out, and ease in out. Animation delay sets a delay before the animation starts, allowing you to offset when an animation begins. Like duration, it's specified in seconds or milliseconds. Animation iteration count determines how many times the animation repeats. It can be a specific number or the keyword infinite for an endless loop. Animation direction defines whether the animation will run normally or in reverse. The default is normal, but if set to reverse, the animation will start from the last keyframe and end at the first keyframe. Animation fill mode defines how the animation will apply the styles from our keyframe before and after its execution. This is hard to understand without visuals, so I'll give it the default value of both. Animation play state allows you to pause and resume the animation. It accepts running. If you want to pause the animation on hover, add a hover state with the animation play state paused. These properties can be used individually or combined in a shorthand animation property, which allows you to specify all the animation properties in a single line, making your CSS cleaner and more concise. Here's how to combine multiple animation properties into one. Loading animation. We need a simple div called loading. We'll turn it into a square with a border and a slight border radius. Using two box shadows, we can make it glow. Next, we apply our animation, which is about two seconds long and is called loading. The timing function is ease in to ensure smoothness. The animation will play infinitely. Now for the interesting part, our keyframes animation. It uses transform to rotate the element on the X, Y, and Z axes. Initially, everything is set to zero. At 33% of the animation, we rotate it on the x-axis by 180 degrees. At 67%, we maintain that rotation and also rotate it on the y-axis. Then at 100%, we keep both rotations and rotate it on the z-axis as well. Here you can see the loading animation works well. By using keyframes, you can create any complex loading animation. Scrolling animation. Look at this effect where the elements are smoothly animated when the page is scrolled. Various animations can also be applied. All this is achieved with just simple lines of CSS. To do this, I have created a scroll element container inside which I added some block elements that will be animated on scroll. We can see the block elements. Now we can apply animation for this scrolling effect, but here nothing happened. So we add keyframes for this scrolling animation. Here we have a starting, from, and ending, to, point. Initially, set its opacity to 0 and scaling to 0 0.5. Finally, set its opacity and scaling back to 1 and use that animation for the block elements. We want the animation to occur when the page is scrolled, with each element animating individually based on the scroll position. To achieve this, use the animation timeline property. Set its value to view, which indicates that the animation happens only when the particular element is visible on the screen. 
This way, the animation is applied individually to each element based on the scroll position when they become visible. However, we can see that the animation is still not finishing properly when the elements are in the middle of the screen. It completes only when the elements move out of the screen. To fix this, use the animation range property and set its value to entry. This makes the animation happen when the element starts to enter the viewport. Now we can see how the animation fully completes when the elements are on the screen. Now we include the cover value in the animation range property. This ensures that the element fully completes the animation by the time it reaches 50% of the viewport. You can also try changing the animation from scale to translation. The elements will be translated when scrolled. Alternatively, try the clip path animation, where the element's width and height grow when scrolled. Experiment with the animation and these properties to achieve your desired effect. If you want to apply these effects to your website, learn to create an animation in just a few minutes by watching this video.